Do you know, by the way, why you all looked at me and started listening and stopped talking? Because I started to look at you. I was in the front all this time. And I was even talking. And before I said hi, I just stood here and I looked at you. And eye contact is one of the things that we're going to be talking about in presentations. I just wanted to brought that up because it was a nice example. I just stood her, stood here and started looking at you and you all started looking at me and stopped talking. That's one of the things that a speaker does to get attention. You don't have to necessarily stand up every Excuse me, I'm going to be talking now. You just can stand here for a little bit. Um, my name is Barbara Mishvi. Um, and this is Margaret, she's going to introduce herself in just a second. Um, I'm one of the coordinators for this class. Um, I am hopefully almost done graduate student at communications department. I teach public speaking. Um, I teach interpersonal communication. Um, I I think this is an awesome idea for the class. She had this idea and I think it's absolutely fabulous and I'm so glad that she allowed me to help coordinate it and hopefully teach it a little bit. Um, my history with public speaking is now I teach it. Before I taught public speaking, I went through hell of my own to learn how to not be afraid of it and to learn how to not have this because <laughs> we all have it, by the way. Believe me, it's, it's perfectly fine. And it's not like some people are born to do it and they just feel better. No. They have it too. They just get over it. Sometimes because they really, really want to. Sometimes because they absolutely have to because they find out they're going to be in public speaking. Um, <laughs> and you just got to deal with it. Um, my, this is my background. I'm from Poland. I live in the United States four years now. I love it. I strongly believe in communication. I think it's super cool and I think it's very relevant to everything we do and I think public presentation is something that you can't really avoid and you do anyway so you might as well do it better. That's kind of my approach to public speaking because if you think about it, you probably just speak really all the time. Anytime you have more than two listeners, you're speaking publicly. So since we're all doing it, you might as well do it better. My goals for this class is to learn from you guys and watch you talking about stuff that you're doing, which is always really, really interesting. Um, anytime you talk, you listen to someone talk about things that they do, that's the best possible example of public speaking because you guys are hopefully interested in what you do. <laughs> um, and I hope to help you with all I can, and I hope we're all going to learn um, as much as we can, and um, I hope we're going to be able to create an environment in which this will not occur as often as we're afraid. Um, yeah, I'm done. Okay. And I'm Margaret. Oh, my name. Um, so I came up with the idea for this class because I am involved in a program called Professors for the Future. And basically, one of the things that we do is we're supposed to come up with something that helps graduate students or postdocs in some way. So uh, with a really broad idea like that, um, the first thing I thought of actually was public speaking and it's because I've had really bad experiences with it and we have to do it anyway. So, um, and then I know just from talking to my friends and other professors that, you know, it's, it's something that you're not really well prepared for at UC Davis at least. Like, I haven't heard of any other classes that are provided to speaking, on presenting your own research, which we all have to do. So I think it's you know something that's needed for us to be able to uh, get better at it, because we have to do it anyway. So my experience was uh, I went to my first academic conference, and I was sitting there waiting to get up and give my talk, and I got more and more nervous until I finally felt like I was going to pass out. And they called my name for me to get up and give my presentation, and I ran out of the room. <laughs> and I just hung out in the bathroom for like 20 minutes until I knew that the session was over and I could leave. And that was my first professional public speaking experience. And so you can guess that having that terrible experience the first time made it even worse the next time. Because the next time, you're like, oh my god, Right? So it just sets you up for failure. So 
I just knew that I had to do something about it. And it was a big surprise for me because um, I never knew that I was going to have that kind of reaction. I am a TA every quarter. I've been at UC Davis for, this is my sixth year, and I've been TAing every quarter. I give a guest lecture every quarter in the classes I TA. So I have lots of experience with giving presentations. And I get nervous, but you know, it's nothing horrible. Like talking to my peers and presenting my own research just did it for me. <laughs> so um, I've, I've presented at a conference since then, and it was still terrifying, but it was easier. So there is hope. <laughs> so that was that was kind of the original idea behind the class was that I wanted to help people get over their public speaking anxiety and also help myself get over it. Um, and then uh, talking with some other people about the structure of the class, we decided that it should focus not only on anxiety, but also on how to actually do a really good presentation. So like once you get over the anxiety, how do you make your presentation really good? How do you make the audience listen to you? And how do you present your ideas in a way that's really exciting and interesting? So that's what the second kind of half of the class is going to focus on. So we're going to go more into like the structure of the class now. I'm going to give you some of this and um, go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to go over this real quick um, to, I hope I gave you enough. I didn't think of We're all graduate students, so I'm going to read the service to you. I'm assuming we all can read. Um, who we are, you already know. On the syllabus, you have our email addresses. Please use them. Um, I actually have official office hours that you can come and talk to me if you need to, but also both me and Margaret will stay um, up on Thursdays mm -hmm. after class, and we're going to be hanging out here for a little bit, so if you have any questions and you can, for some reason, make it to uh, my office hours or meet with Margaret or something like this, just let us know. Um, I do emphasize it, though, because graduate or undergraduate, we don't really like to talk to our professors that much sometimes, and um, I'm just trying to let you guys know that can do, we we are willing to do what we can to help you, so please um, use it. You know what the course objectives are. We're trying to um, manage our public speaking anxiety. We're going to be learning about public speaking anxiety a little bit. There are two things that we recommend for readings. You don't have to buy those books because we're not going to be assigning homework. We're not going to be dealing with, oh, you have to read the chapter five for next time. You don't. You can. Those are both, both very useful publications. So if you want to buy them, that's a good thing to have. If you don't, though, they're both in our library. So you can take a look at them, see if it's worth your money or not. You can buy them at Amazon. We'll be the chief of both of them. Um, you can do our office hour photocopy a chapter. Yeah, if you want to also, because we both have a copy. And then another thing is we're going to put it on as soon as we figure it out. We're going to do it. We're going to put it on reserve in the library, so you're going to be able to um, use it as well. Um, but you don't really have to read it. If, by any chance, we come up on something that we think you really should read, we will let you know, and we'll probably post it on the smart side. Which might happen, but it's, yeah. Um, I'm not talking to you about presentations. Barbara is going to talk to you about um, going to talk to you about presentations. This is a pass, no pass class. How far is this <laughs> To be in grad school and have a class that you just need to pass. And basically, pass means as long as you're here, you don't pass out, throw up, or leave. <laughs> you have a pulse, and you deliver your presentation, you're good. <laughs> really, we're, it's OK. As long as you do, we're all here to learn, we're all here to hopefully improve the process. So literally, as long as you are here and you are capable of delivering anything that you have prepared, you're good. The other important thing is attendance. We're going to have awesome people come here and talk to us. You really want to hear them. And we will actually take roster. What we're going to do is these little place cards. Um, this is a very complicated system. Can you tell me what you're going to do with it? <laughs> she tried to explain it to me, but I didn't really get that. So you guys all have name cards. Basically, we're going to collect them every day after class. And then when you come to the next class, you come and pick up your name card. And if you don't pick up your name card, that means that you were there that day. So that's how we're taking the How can us is that? That way we pass the awkward face when I'm like, I <laughs> um, 
Um, we'll try to remember your names though, hopefully. So yeah, the classes, uh, pass no pass. Um, the two important things is being here and delivering your presentation and attending classes. Um, you can miss too. So if something happens, obviously it's, it's okay. Things happen to us all and we know it. So if you can't or if you know that you're not gonna be able to attend, it's perfectly fine. Um, what else? We will have um, one extra time in week seven, which is around February 17th, when we will try to figure out an extra time where at least half of us can meet in case not everybody can make a presentation. Because we have only two presentation days for presentation number two, and we might not have enough time for all of us to present. So what we will try to do is sometime around that time, we'll try to um, get this room and meet for one extra class period. So all of us get the chance to deliver the presentations with an actual audience. So I'm giving you a heads up, we're probably gonna like create a full or somehow go about it so we can figure out the time that would be best for, for as many of us as possible, but I'm just giving you a heads up that there will be a one extra um, class that we will uh, do, which we'll want to make sure that everybody has a chance to present. Um, I think that's all from me. And, so, uh, yeah. I'm just going to go over a little bit about what these presentations are that you're going to be doing. You might have looked at the syllabus already and seen what they are, but um, so first of all, you might have noticed that we're not making you go around the room and introduce yourselves to each other and to us. And that's because that can be scary. Um, that causes me anxiety every time I have to do it in my graduate classes, like anything. I hate it, you know. Every time we're going around, I'm not listening to what anybody else is saying the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, oh, my name is Margaret Smisher, I'm a graduate student <laughs> in a geography graduate department. You know, I'm trying, I'm like trying to stick it in my head even though I'm just talking about myself and so, um, so that's going to be your first presentation. Is you're going to have, I think, three minutes to introduce yourself to the class. Um, it's going to be after we have two uh, lectures on overcoming public speaking anxiety. So that'll be your first little push into giving a public speech. And you're going to be talking about yourself, what you do, what you study, just you know, like you normally do in all of your classes. But we're going to try and reduce anxiety with that, so it'll be a little test. Um, so hopefully, I mean, that one won't take too much preparation for. The second one is going to be focused on presenting what you do, um, whatever that might be. We have a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds in here, which is going to be cool. So presenting what you do, what you study, what you research to a non-academic audience. And that can be, you can aim your presentation at um, undergrads, at maybe talking to the media, you can do your presentation like you're trying to explain what you do to your parents, um, which is always fun. So, we're, and we're going to have some people come in and talk to you, how do you kind of tailor what uh, you say to different audiences. And then the last one is going to be on presenting what you do to um, an academic audience, and we're going to treat it like you're preparing to give a talk at a conference, at an academic conference to your peers. So um, that'll be really interesting too, since we're all from different fields and all have like no understanding of what the other ones are saying. So I think that'll be really good. Um, so the last two are uh, the second one is seven minutes long, and the third one is going to be seven <coughs> minutes long, and you're going to have two minutes questions like you would at a conference. Uh, for the first one, you don't need to do any PowerPoints or anything like that. It's just talking about yourself. For the second two, um, we'd like you to use visual aids. It doesn't have to be PowerPoint, but we're going to have a lot of focus on using PowerPoint. We're going to have somebody come in and give a guest lecture on it, and then we're going to have two periods in a computer lab where we have someone helping you out um, designing your presentations. So you're welcome to use PowerPoint. You're welcome to use anything else that you up with as well, though. So, any questions about the presentation? What I would like to say for myself is it doesn't have to be PowerPoint, however. Remember that there are other ways to use audio visual aids. I feel sometimes that we're on PowerPoint overload, and I sometimes when I teach public speaking, I have this feeling that I'm going to see one more PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> But um, a little bit. So don't, if you feel like, you know what, maybe there would be a 
different way to present what I do, please feel free to use it. It's not like you have got to prepare a PowerPoint presentation. It's useful and it can be used in many ways that um, I can't even predict and I'm hoping to learn a lot from our PowerPoint workshop. But yeah, I just wanted to let you know this is not something you have to do, but I think this is going to be very, very useful. The other very important thing about this class is that, and I'm going to give you those now to take a look at it. The other very important thing about this class is feedback. Even though we're not really grading you, um, we want you to know how you're doing and we want you to learn from it. Because this is essentially the only way that we can get better. If we don't know how we're doing, we're never going to get better. So the thing is, after each presentation cycle, um, what we're going to do is after each presentation cycle, we're going to have a discussion in which we talk briefly about strengths, weaknesses, certain things we can work on, certain things we should work on. But separate from that, while you are presenting, your peers, everyone in the class, will get one of these for each of the presentation. And the reason for that is sometimes, as graduate and mature as we are, we don't want to hear certain things in public. We don't want to know what other people necessarily thought of, I don't know, weaknesses or certain strengths of our presentation. This is a way for you guys to get feedback and to give feedback that is completely anonymous but very productive, hopefully. And the way I uh, designed this deals with different aspects of each of those presentations. The first one will deal with delivery. We will talk about delivery a little bit. We will talk about eye contact, how important it is. Um, and one to 10, basically, the way I intended this is percentage of eye contact, roughly. You want to have more than 50% of eye contact during each presentation. That's kind of a mark that you want to aim at. So points being one to 10, think about it as percentage of eye contact that you notice from the speaker. If you like, they looked at your own. Extemporaneous quality in public speaking jargon <laughs> means basically a balance between a formal delivery where you read and then completely impromptu, unprepared, spontaneous delivery. What we're going to be aiming for is presentations that are prepared. You work with an outline, but we want to avoid people standing here and reading every single word that they have planned to say because it makes a presentation very boring and usually lacks eye contact. That's just bad. And we've all been into lectures like this where people just stand there. And you're thinking, I'm really glad you have a very close personal relationship with this piece of paper, but I don't care. I am here and I want you to look at me. So this is something we're going to try to avoid. We're going to try to balance the <laughs> with completely, I have no idea what I'm going to be talking about. So I figured I'm just going to say something. Because that usually makes a very unprofessional impression. Body language, we're going to be talking about this. You want to avoid hands here. You want to avoid hair completely on your face. You want to avoid certain, I did this. That's why I'm going to be encouraging you to get videotaped. I taught by then already. I was a community college teacher. I was just so important and everything. And I was teaching in Poland. And someone videotaped me because we had a training. And I realized that everybody can hear me. My pitch is good. Everything's good. But I do this all the time. Constantly. 45 minutes of lecture, and I do pee pee dance. And I'm thinking, <laughs> and nobody tell me that. I do it for four years. And no, really? <laughs> and had I not seen myself on a video thing, I would never do that. And I would never know I'm doing this. And this is, that's, it's ridiculous. I, I mean, I understand you're nervous, but come on. Things like that you sometimes can figure out. So this might be a good example of why language is extremely distracting. Vocalisms, uh, uh, because like, uh, like, uh, when I really like, uh, say something, uh, that's like really, uh, important. Again, we're going to be working on those too. Overall quality of delivery, basically how much delivery got in the way of content or not. Content I don't think requires much of explanations. What's, what central idea did the speaker try to convey? The reason why I put it in there is you want everyone who listens to you to put roughly the same thing here. Because that means you communicated. Public presentation is an act of communication. So essentially what you want to end up with is a message that people got. You hopefully want them to get the same message, right? So you want to communicate your main point. What were the main points? Were the main points stated at the beginning? That's always very important to make sure people know what you're going to be talking about. Because people, no offense, don't really listen to you that much. 
And it's not because you're not interested in our thing, it's just that our attention span for personal delivery isn't really as big as we would think. At any given time, according to research, about 30% of you is listening to me. And it kind of like goes in circles. <laughs> and that's why people usually repeat everything that they say because they're hoping that and the 30% will switch around the class and then everybody will finally get it. Um, what, what, what key facts were most memorable, interesting? This is a little different than what main points. So sometimes you might want to know what things in your research or in your presentation people think were most interesting, were the coolest, because you might want to use them as an example, or you might, you might want to develop them later for your future presentation, stuff like that. Did the speaker cite any external sources and how credible were these sources? <coughs> credible sources are very important. I'm, I hope to have a little time to talk about it, but at the same time, I'm not going to explain it to you all because we all know how important credible sources are. We spend our shared amount of time doing all our work cited and everything else, so we know why it's important. Was the structure of presentation well suited for conveying the overall message? This is something I want you to think about when you prepare your presentation, too. Of course, we're used to the intro body conclusion, preview, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But if you present a presentation, especially talking to non-academics, do you have this moment sometimes when people ask, what do you study? And you want to be like, <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. Because <laughs> you know that if you're going to tell them that you study goal inference according to communication theory of something, they're going to look at you and say, ah, that's great. Often it's really hard for people who aren't in our discipline to understand what, the, what are they doing? Um, you might want to use an innovative structure sometimes to explain it to people. You might want to start with some completely off the wall example. You might want to start with something that people would never connect with your discipline, but that you know somehow connects with your discipline. So think about structure as a kind of tool for you to use too. You don't necessarily always have to start with, hi, my name is, and this is what I'm going to talk about. You can totally walk in the room and say, do you know why elephants do this? If it's somehow related to your discipline. <laughs> you can, and it can be surprisingly very memorable and help your audience remember it differently. So this is why this question is there. And finally, audience adaptation. No public presentation would be really um, important without the public. Because that's just you talking to yourself, and that's just weird. Um, I do that all the time, but at the same time, you do need your public. So what did the speaker do to capture your interest? What physically did this person do to reach out to you, to acknowledge you, to say, OK, I see you, I know you're here, and you are really important to me. This is something that we're going to be creating. Um, what did you like most about this presentation? And finally, how this presentation could be improved. Don't be mean. Be productive. Think about what you would like to see on this piece of paper to make your own presentation better. And this is something that we're going to be using for every presentation. So if you want to print it off the smart site before the presentation days, you can do that. And we're going to be bringing some extra to the class too. And that's basically a short explanation of why this is here and why all these questions are here. I am excited to hear about that because when I <laughs> explain to people what I study, uh, I basically study squirrel communication and I scare squirrels for seconds. <laughs> like, that's my little introduction to what I do. And it's really uh, a very good explanation, but <laughs> it kind of leaves people with like, okay. Um, so, uh, so I wanted to mention that you might have noticed that we're videotaping right now, and we're going to be videotaping all the lectures that we're doing, and that's because we're going to be podcasting them. Um, we have the option of videotaping your presentation, obviously, because we have a video camera. You don't have to do that though. So I know from experience that having a videotape rolling can sometimes change the way that you talk because you're aware that, you know, it's, I don't know why it's so different. People are looking at you and you're kind of self-conscious, but when there's a video camera, it's like, it's gonna be there forever. And like anyone can see it, you know, even though nobody's gonna wanna watch you. No offense, but even if you posted it on YouTube, how many people do you think? <laughs> So anyway, so um, we'd be happy to videotape you. You would be the only one that gets your tape. We're not going to watch it in class. Um, you can just delete the file if you want to. You don't ever have to watch it. But it can be a really good tool, like Barbara mentioned, that you'll see yourself doing things that you have no idea that you're doing. Um, so it can be a great tool. You can do it for all your presentations. You know, 
one of them, none of them. So just let us know if you'd like us to do that for you, and we'll videotape you and uh, give you a copy of it. We'll be the only one that ever sees it, unless you want to show it to your friends and family. I would encourage you to do it just because I know that as embarrassing as it is, really, if you watch it all by yourself, you can really benefit from it because you're going to be able to instantly see the things that you don't want to do anymore. And remember, we don't have to see, we don't even have to see it. Right. We can just give you the file and there, that's your presentation and we never mess with it, you can do it if you want, but I would encourage you also if you do want us to see it and like go over this and say, oh, you know, we talked about this or this is something that you could have, whatever you want, it's yours to do. I would strongly encourage you to do it. I just, I know how embarrassing it was for me to think, yes, it looks stupid, but I've been doing it for four years and nobody told me that I have been doing this. And this is really bad. Because you want, you know how it is when you have something in your teeth, right? Or like you have to do it. The chalk print right happens to me all the time. Like right here. And you walk all day on campus with the uh. So yeah, it's just something that I'm I'm thinking of. Yeah, I think it's really great too. I did it for I was teaching a class for undergraduates on uh, global climate change and so I taped the last lecture because I was like only oh, good use it for like I don't know, something. For applying for jobs or something like that. And I had it on my computer and my mom saw that it's on my she watched the whole thing and then she sent it to my grandma and <laughs> like everybody we know. So, so don't store it on your desk. Yeah, you're going to like secretly even something else. Um, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an introduction to the speakers that we're going to have coming. Um, they're really great and I'm really excited that we got them here for you. Um, we're going to start with this week on Thursday. We're going to have a guest lecture. Um, she is. I haven't actually met her in person, but her name is Sharon, and she works at Kaiser Permanente. Um, she is a therapist, and she specializes in anxiety, and it's in all kinds of anxiety. Um, so she's going to cover public speaking anxiety, but she's actually going to be talking a lot about like what happens in your body and your brain when you're feeling this anxiety, and like what is this physical reaction, and you know, what, and that's something that has really helped me with. Uh, overcoming public speaking anxiety is just understanding, you know, that it's okay to have this feeling of my heart racing. It doesn't mean that I'm going to have a heart attack or, you know, it's okay that my stomach hurts, I'm not going to throw up. You know, I'm not going to actually pass out. So that has helped me a lot with understanding these feelings that are going around in your body and that are crazy and feel like you can't have any control over them. So that's what she's going to focus on. Um, and then we're going to have Dr. Motley is going to be next week on Tuesday. He is a professor here at UC Davis who's actually retiring, I think, after this quarter. Um, and he he works in the communication department. He does research on lots of different things. But one thing that he specializes in is public speaking anxiety. So that's kind of exciting. And he wrote the book that we are recommending. Um, and so what he actually does is he addresses public speaking um, coming at it from a different point of view. So he really tries to get you to think about giving a presentation as just talking to a group of people rather than being a performer, right? So there's a big difference in the way that you approach a speech if you think about that you're performing and people are judging you, or if you think about that I have something that I want to tell a bunch of people and you know, lucky me, I get a room full of people that have to listen to me. So that's what he's going to talk about, and that's a big help too. Um, then later on, we're going to have Dr. Bamforth. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard him talk. He is the brew master on campus. So that's what he studies is brewing a beer. Um, he is awesome. I've, I TA a class on mold mushrooms in society. And he comes and gives a guest lecture for that class every quarter, and he is so good. So that's why we're having him, is because he is amazing at talking to undergrads about something that's really complicated. I mean, he talks about brewing, but he actually does a really detailed description of what it takes to get, you know, through the brewing process, and then he incorporates yeast because it's a fungus class. So um, he is really uh, respected on campus. He gets invited to do tons of guest lectures because he's just so fun to listen to. And then he also was on, I don't know if any of you ever watched um, Sunday Morning on CBS. He, they just did a special on him on there. So he's also very good at translating what he does into talking to the media. Um, and I'm going to try and get a clip of that and put it on the smart site. Um, hopefully he has a clip that he can give us so you guys can all see that. 
And then we have uh, Fernando, who's going to be our PowerPoint guru. Um, he is an IT person here on campus. He specializes, I mean, he's really great at PowerPoint. He's also very good at website design. So he really concentrates on making things look good and making things uh, user friendly. And for the PowerPoint stuff, he's going to come and give a lecture on PowerPoint on um, kind of the general things about PowerPoint, like when to use it, when not to use it, making mistakes that you can avoid. And then we're going to have those two computer sessions with him. And he also has told me that um, you can make your posters, like for academic conferences, in PowerPoint. So that's something else that he's going to offer to show us how to do. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, yeah, and those are, those are going to be all of our guest speakers. And then the rest of it is going to be the two of us. The post doctor, do we have any post doctor? Oh, yeah. Students? Post docs? Any post docs? You're all graduate students today? Okay. Well, we had some post docs that wanted to take the class, so okay, I guess they deserve one to go. Well, deal with them with the time comes, I guess. <laughs> um, I am not going to check the roster because what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep your name tags and then I'm just going to mark who was here today. Um, we are pretty much done. Before, uh, next time you know what's going to be happening, we're going to have two guest lectures, and then after the guest lectures, you come in and you start with the um, first presentation. So be aware of a few things I would like to mention real quick when you think about your first presentation, just so you kind of have, can, what's the saying in the English word? Hit the ground doing something. Running. Rolling. <laughs> Rolling? Running. 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 There you go. I was like, I know you're hitting the ground and then you do something. But <laughs> anyway. Um, see, we're all there, all this time. Um, that's what I want you to do. And uh, I want you to remember a few most important things. The time limit is important. We want to get used to time limit. We want to limit ourselves because nothing annoys you more than a speaker who says, I'm going to take a few minutes of your time, and then 25 minutes later, you want to shoot them. Because you're thinking, dude, five minutes is five times 60 seconds. And I'm missing my lunch. So you want to avoid that. Um, you want to also. You want to go longer than a minute and a half. The reason for that, and this is something that I'm sure our anxiety speakers will talk about, everything that happens in your body, this whole I'm going to die and pass out and these people are going to eat me alive, all this thing stops being at its worst after 90 seconds. This biological thing that happens to your body. We are trained evolutionary too. If we see that many faces looking at us, it's war, basically. Either they're gonna kill us, kill us or eat us. One of those two things is gonna happen. And our body is trained to, after 90 seconds, if they haven't eaten you or killed you, it means that, oh, okay. Because <laughs> our body can't produce that amount of adrenaline and panic for much longer periods of time, because it would just be unhealthy for us. So basically, you want to go longer than 90 seconds. You want to make sure that you're talking to us for longer than a minute and a half. Because you want to experience this. Which happens biologically, I can promise you that. Um, so pay attention to that. Um, I would recommend if you want to practice, like say it to yourself one or two times. Um, even if you say it out loud, nobody's going to laugh at you. It's okay if you're preparing a speech or a presentation. I think Margaret mentioned a very important thing. We're not doing a theater here. We're not teaching you to be actors. We're teaching you to say what you already have to say and what you already know and what you already want to say in a way that doesn't make you want to die. Basically, this is kind of how we want you to approach it. It's not, we're not sitting here thinking, well, let's see, shall we? That's not the context. The context is, OK, good job. You can do it. And basically, we're just going to be talking about techniques to make it a little easier for you. Um, do you have any questions for us, to any of us, about anything? I, I think about the units. I oh, noticed yeah. that it was variable. Yeah. yeah, so it's variable units. You should sign up for two. Okay. Because it's two hours a week, so you should be taking it for two. Unless there's like some reason. Um, yeah, so about the books, were these just interesting reads or did you actually get something out of it when you guys wrote these? They are the books that basically I use to kind of come up with what we're doing for the class. Because uh, I don't have a background in public speaking besides that I, I found it. Um, so 
I met with Dr. Motley and he gave me this book, which was excellent. I read the whole thing in like a weekend, um, and then I had to give a lecture the following week, and it really helped. And he's actually done a study that showed that people who read his book versus people that didn't read his book, it immediately helps. Um, it's it's a life-changing experience yeah. for me too. I really <laughs> love this book. And like, even if you just read the first one or two chapters, it, that's, I mean, that's the whole thing that he talks about and the rest of the book is kind of like, uh, organizing your speeches and different stuff. So the first well, few chapters are about anxiety. So I would really recommend that book. Um, both of them you can find on Amazon, and again, you can come and photocopy them if you want to, whatever, we can get them to you. Um, the other one is a really basic guide on speaking in general, and it's one that I think they use for public speaking classes. So it's basically what I needed as a background to be able to tell you about public speaking. Um, which actually Barbara is going to do most of. So uh, it, it's got a little bit of an introduction to lots of different parts of speaking, like how do you organize a talk, how do you figure out what your audience is like, um, you know, different kinds of talks, persuasive speeches, like we're not going to be covering that kind of stuff, so that's more for a speaking class, but there are some chapters in there that are, that are really good. And there are some things that you can, I like this book for one reason, it takes you a little beyond what you would think of as a public speaking class. It talks generally about speaking in front of people, not necessarily in a context that, oh, I have to do public speaking, I have to give an informative and persuasive speech. It talks a lot about, for instance, even if you read chapter about persuasive speeches or informative speeches, it helps you to know with what purpose you talk to your audience. Even if you don't physically have to prepare a persuasive speech for a public speaking class, it helps if you think preparing your presentation, okay, what do I want these people to end up with? Do I want them to end up with an information? Or do I want them to end up with a sort of a hmm, maybe I hmm. So, because you're going to be talking differently to people, for instance, who maybe you want to um, persuade to pursue your discipline or people who you want to encourage to do certain things versus people who you just want to strictly inform, okay, this is what I do, or this is what I came up with. So even if you don't prepare a formal type of informative or, pers or persuasive speech, it can still help you to think about a purpose, as in, why am I doing this? And then it, depending on why am I doing this, I'm going to maybe shape it a little differently, or I'm going to start a little differently, or I'm going to address my audience differently. And this is really useful. Do you guys know that? And let us know if you guys come up with any readings. Um, I have a couple that I'm going to post on the site, you know, like uh, websites or anything else that you come up with, anything that's helped you. I love the quotes one. The quotes one are super cool because if you're looking for a funny quote or some opening or some good stuff, there are plenty of websites. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Yes, I have. I flipped through both books to see if there's something about volume because I've, I've gotten lots of feedback. I don't talk about them and I'll feel like I'm shouting. But, but, um, <laughs> so if there's any way that you guys can find information about that, yeah. send it to us. That would be useful. Yeah. So that I'd like there to would be. That personally. I know breathing has a lot to do with it. I um, used to, um, back in Poland, I used to know a, um, actually an acting coach that was talking to me about it a little bit. Maybe I will ask her actually for some useful websites or something like that. Because yeah, this, we don't want to do this too. It is, it is sometimes a big issue. I know <clears throat> my issue is that when I'm going to less than 20 people, people are like, I get here, you know, <laughs> and it's good. I'm, I'm good. I do the same thing when I TA. Like, I'll be, you know, talking about something and I'm really excited, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's genetic, though. When I talk to my mom, I hold my phone back here. <laughs> and I don't have it on speaker. I'm just, okay then. <laughs> Don't take your name tags with you. Leave them for us. <laughs>